Good morning, afternoon or night, depending on where you are watching this conference from. I'm Marcel Rauch, the main author of this paper, and I would like to present you my work on stationary LiDAR sensors for indoor quadcopter localization. A co-author of this paper is my professor at Budapest University of Technology and Economics, Gábor Fehér. Any vehicle that is desired to be driven autonomously needs information of its position and environment to be able to navigate freely. In cases where there, are, there is no infrastructure available, it is common to use a method called SLAM. To give you a bit of background, SLAM stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping, and it is a collective name for algorithms that are used to localize a robot or other vehicle in an unknown environment, while also building a map of this environment. The main input of SLAM comes from a ranging device that is typically light-based, camera or a LiDAR, but I have mainly focused on LiDARs. A LiDAR can measure distance to a single or to a set of points at a time, and by rotating this LiDAR using a servo motor, these measurement points can be extended to 2D or even 3D. Rotating LiDAR sensors are called planar scanners. These are precise instruments and can be used to produce highly detailed maps, but require an industrial-grade hexa or octacopter to be carried airborne because they are heavy and sensitive. My idea is to develop a system that uses well-placed stationary LiDAR sensors to scan the environment of a small quadcopter under 1 kg and build a map using data coming from this system and the SLAM algorithm. This can be useful in scenarios where mapping or localization is needed, but mapping quality is less important. My choice was a VL53L1X LiDAR sensor produced by ST Microelectronics. I had previous experience with this device, and it was the smallest and lightest sensor available on the market in its field at the time. It weighs only half a gram and can measure up to 4 meters and up to 50 Hz sampling rate. Its most relevant feature for this project is that it has an adjustable region of interest. In other words, instead of scanning the whole field of view, a region inside the sensor's field of view can be selected and distance will only be measured to an object inside this region. By dividing the field of view into even non-overlapping regions and measuring distance in them one after another, a higher resolution of image can be acquired from the sensor. I call this scanning. Using this method, I was able to extend the single point LiDAR sensor to produce a 2D array of ranges for an image with a resolution of 2x2, 3x3, or 4x4. To simulate the selected LiDAR sensor accurately, I have conducted a series of measurements with every relevant sensor setting configuration. The sensor has the following settings. The timing budget is an analog value that sets the maximum time available for the sensor to complete a ranging procedure. Distance preset sets the internal thresholds for short, medium, or long ranging. The resolution is the image resolution as described before. The measurements have been repeated on the same set of distances with every relevant sensor setting combination. I have determined the following parameters from these datasets maximum ranging distance, standard deviation, and sampling rate of the complete scan. By using these extracted parameters, the LiDAR with these setting configurations can be accurately simulated. Here you can see the results of the conducted measurements on a single plot using the VR53L1X sensor. The y-axis shows the average ranging distance in millimeters, while the x-axis represents the sensor resolutions grouped by sensor settings into coulombs. In each coulomb, a group of measurements are plotted using the same distance preset, short, medium or long, and the same timing budget on every resolution 1 by 1 to 4 by 4. This is to see how resolution affects the ranging distance and standard deviation while keeping other settings untouched. For each point in this figure, measurements were collected for at least one minute. Ranging distance and standard deviation is determined based on this data set. You could see 
that the ranges start to deviate from the real distance if it is increased above a certain level. I have determined the maximum distance as the farthest distance without deviation. Data collection has been done in Gazebo Simulator using the PX4 repository for the simulation of the drone. I have placed two simulated LiDAR sensors on the top and the bottom of the simulated quadcopter, each scanning the top and the bottom hemispheres of the environment of the vehicle. A complete saturated scan can be seen in the left image and the scan inside the building is on the right. This is done to have a complete high resolution and high sampling grade phase scan that can be filtered later to match the LiDAR parameters and layout and the number of sensors. Using this method, the same dataset collected during a single flight can be used to simulate different sensor settings and layouts and their performance can be compared. For the SLAM algorithm, the following data is collected from the simulator. LiDAR published on 50 Hz, IMU also published on 50 Hz, absolute position and transformations. Transformations contain the LiDAR positions in relation to the main vehicle frame. After collecting data from Gazawa Simulator, the next step is to filter it to match a certain sensor layout and settings. This is done by a custom Python script that sets the number of sensors, layout, and the previously determined parameters that are the same for each sensor in the layout. As for processing, I choose Cartographer SLAM because of its popularity. The SLAM algorithm needs to be tuned for each filtered dataset to provide the most accurate map and localization. The tuning procedure requires patience and experience, therefore it is subject to human error. As the last step of the workflow, to be able to compare different SLAM setups, an objective measure is needed. For this, I choose to calculate the root mean square error between the SLAM trajectory and the trajectory extracted from the raw data produced by Gazebo. The smaller this error is, the closer the estimated trajectory follows the ground truth. The SLAM evaluation starts early with visual inspection during the tuning of Cartographer SLAM. Here I have focused on the consistency and quality of the build map, but also on the reliability of the building procedure. The second step is the RMS error calculation between the ground truth and the SLAM trajectory. For this, an example can be seen on the right, extracted from the map seen on the left. I wanted to be able to differentiate the errors and artifacts caused by different sensor parameters, so I choose to introduce them one by one instead of just enabling them all at once. For this, the same layout has been used, consisting of 13 sensors with non-overlapping field of views evenly covering the 360 degrees of the horizontal plane as seen on the right. Sensor resolution is expected to have the highest impact, then the sampling rate, and lastly the maximum distance. So these were introduced in the slamming procedure in this order. At first, I tried the effect of the 4x4 resolution without changing other parameters and step by step went down to lower resolutions 3x3, 2x2 and lastly 1x1. Lower resolutions mean higher sampling rates, but in my experience, the number of points per scan is more important than the sampling rate itself. Lower resolutions also introduced artifacts like curved corners and what I call transition points. These points are inserted into a map when a near and a far object are visible inside the sensor's field of view so that the range point is placed somewhere in between. Sampling rate made the tuning procedure harder because it required different parameters to be tuned, but it did not introduce other artifacts. Maximum distance has proved to have a high impact on the reliability of the map building because it saturates a high number of ranges per scan in bigger rooms, so these ranges are excluded from the SLAM procedure and this reduced set of points is less effectively inserted into the current map and sometimes the map falls apart without proper tuning. Lastly, I wanted to reduce the number of sensors to see how it affects the mapping quality. 
and find the lowest number needed for consistent map building. So I have removed the sensors one by one until the produced map is still consistent and map building is still reliable. I have found eight sensors to be the lowest number to produce maps like that. A map built using 13 sensors can be seen on the top right image and using eight in the bottom. A slight tilt can be observed in the big room using the reduced set of sensors and some opacity in the bottom left room. A summary of the RMS error can be seen in the table at the bottom showing that unfiltered data has 6.95 cm error while the introduction of the sensor resolution only raised the error by 1.4 cm. On the other hand, the introduction of sampling rate doubled and the maximum distance almost quadrupled this error. The reduction of the number of sensors from 13 to 8 apparently reduced the error, but I think it's because of finer tuning. In this paper, I have presented you a navigation system that is lightweight enough so it can be carried by a quadcopter under 1 kg and it only uses stationary LiDAR sensors without mechanical components. Minimal if 8 sensors need to be used or 13 for better mapping quality. This system is able to produce decent quality maps for navigation inside smaller buildings. Thank you for your attention. And I would like to say a very special thank you to my wife who supported me throughout my work. Without her, it wouldn't have been possible. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them.